thing that we really want to understand about empathy is empathy simply means allowing others truth as they are, others perspective as they are, and being aware of that simply. Because truth is different from one to another based on their own journey, based on their own soul mission, their experiences from the past and now, their emotional state, mental state, their surroundings in that moment. So everything is affecting and truth is based on a perspective one holds about something in that moment, which means it is changeable. What you believe to be true can be different the next moment when you realize something or recognize something or expand your perspective or expand your awareness or vice versa. As you close your heart or as you will withhold yourself as you are feeling afraid or doubtful, you see? So uh, we talk about universal truth and that that is the ultimate truth. But simply, we are all here to experience different truths from different angles. It's like this. So you go to a cafe that you usually go to every day or quite often. And you have a corner or a seat or a table that you feel comfortable in, that you enjoy uh, sitting in. So you go to that table, you sit there, and you might see the same scenery, same perspective. But if you allow yourself to explore, meaning get out of that comfort zone, you choose to sit in another angle, in another corner, in another area, even though it's the same cafe, just by sitting in a different place, different perspective, meaning different angle, you start to see and discover different things. You see, that's an expanding perspective. That's a different new perspective. So we think that the cafe is always the same. I experience the same. But just by going outside that comfort zone, by being in a different perspective, in a different place, we discover something new that expands our awareness. And we discover something. And we expand our consciousness. And with that, we allow ourselves to understand all corners, all aspects of our lives, and all aspects of ourselves. So it applies to ourselves, discovering who we are. When we have a fixed identity and belief about who I am, who I need to be, who I want to be, a very fixed, forced idea, it's hard to expand and go beyond that limitation of that boundary thinking or the image that I hold because I'm an infinite expansion and that is the potential. And when I limit myself like that, I start to feel frustrated simply because that is against my nature. My nature is to expand, but I am limiting myself, restricting myself. And so therefore, it is important to remain in surrender and not to identify yourself with one thing because you can be one perspective right now and the other perspective the next moment. And you're going to allow yourself to explore and experience all of this. And at one point, you're going to come to a point where you go in and integrate all of these different and new perspectives. And in that moment, you're going to transcend those experiences. That's when we experience transformation. That's when we let go of all those experiences, the past, old identities, and we create a new opening for ourselves, meaning... We are constantly given new opportunities because the nature of who we are, the nature of the universe, is infinite expansion. And in order to expand, sometimes we need to contract, meaning go in, go to our center, to a single unit where we are integrating all these aspects as one. You see, so contraction uh, is related to that meaning, not just you know um, limiting, restricting, restricting yourself, but actually 
seeing all these different dimensions and perspectives and ideas and images and integrating and it all comes down as one. So, you know, the idea of oneness is there, the completeness. And once we complete, a new cycle opens up and it's an endless process. So that's why the symbol of the spiral is endless. It goes to the center, goes around, and then goes in and out, in and out, expand, contract, expand, contract, and that's how we evolve constantly. So that's something that you want to understand about empathy. And what's related to empathy is the idea of codependency, because a lot of the cases growing up, based on the conditionings that our previous generations inherited unconsciously, it's likely that we've been condition to believe that as the truth and that's been anchored in our patterns so we are repeating this pattern so what's related to this idea of empathy is affecting uh, the dynamic of the relationship and that's affected to how we feel and what it's like is this so empathy for me or what i learned was that I need to take care of others who I love, like family, like close ones, right? So what we were expected uh, as being empathic or kind, loving, was to save our loved ones, right? We need to save. And we learn to be saved by our loved ones. And when that doesn't happen, we get disappointed and we get into resentment. So this dynamic comes because we learn to manipulate. Instead of expressing our emotions directly as they are, we learn to go in in a sneaky way or hide our intentions to withdraw something that I need because of fear fear of rejection, fear of retaliation, right? Fear of repercussion, because when we did that or practiced early on, they were ignored, dismissed, rejected, denied, or abandoned. So we haul the trauma inside. And with that fear projection, we start to play the same way. We learn to manipulate the way our previous generations used to manipulate us to get what they need from our sources, you see? And so what happens is we inherit this idea that I need to be saved and I need to save my loved ones. So we need to take care of others. We need to take responsibility for how they feel. So this creates all kinds of resentment and drama because I have this expectation. And so they're not gonna expect directly, but they're gonna make me feel like I am responsible to take such an action to meet their needs. You see, it's a very indirect way, but we're gonna play that out. And so we have to play getting games. And when we don't deliver, they're going to resent, they're going to hate, meaning they're going to punish ourselves, punish others. And so we hold this dynamic of punishment and reward. When they come through, meet my needs, then I give them love and attention but only when they do that, only when they serve as my source to provide what I need. So what that is, is um, taking advantage of others in a way. But we all play this game quite often. And so it is really important to be aware now of these patterns. And if this truth triggers you, um, you may not be ready for it right now, or this truth uh, will come to you in another timing. So if this resonates with you, if you are called to reflect on your own patterns, 
is something that you need to know at this time in order for you to move forward or go beyond where the freedom lies because we are tied to others. It's like you owe me something, I owe you something. That's why we become defensive or we think that we are putting up boundaries, but it's more from a defensive stand rather than expressing my authentic self with my authentic needs and wants in a neutral way that is, you know, not from a place of fear, but just from a place of honoring and respecting myself. It's a very different energy that you're sitting with that you are going to communicate to others or emanate through you. So like attracts like, this energies, you're going to attract people who try to draw from you and you do the same with others, which is codependency, you see? So, you know, whatever that you do, you're not going to speak your intention out loud. You're going to hide so we call it, you know, being sneaky to get what I want because it's like this. I, I play a character in order to draw something, in order to draw a compassion, empathy. And so, um, or I say, I do this because I love you or I do this for you. Why do we explain or over explain these things or try to justify what I'm trying to you know, ask from others. We are trying to draw something that I need that I feel like I can fulfill or provide on my own, such as feeling loneliness or feeling restlessness. Um, it's like when I'm alone, I'm bored. So I call people up and then I need their energy to occupy my time and feeling loneliness or feeling bored you see so what happens is instead of connecting it's not about deep connection or getting to know each other but it's more about trying to fulfill my own needs and seeking others and when those others or other sources are not available then i go into deep depression or feeling negative about myself about where i am because i'm sitting in such lack energy right now meaning that it's not enough where i am it's not enough how i feel right now it's not enough who i am so my existence is in question and I'm in doubt of myself. And because I'm in doubt of myself, I don't trust myself. I don't trust life. And so what? I go into fear and I start to create worries. I start to worry. Why? Because I start to think, meaning overthink. Overthinking means I'm not seeing things as they are but i tend to think more than what it is you see whether it's positive or whether it's negative so we start to go into this whole patterns so something that i want you to be aware of and really reflect on by having this awareness 